history of the mad mushroom. To explore the history of magic mushrooms, psilocybin mushrooms, our starting point has already been pinned for us. The coordinates of that time and place are two million years ago on the plains of Africa, just moments before the first light of dawn shone down on our current species. The beginning of psychedelic mushroom use collides and coincides with the inception of Homo sapiens, the wise humans. In the beginning, Homo sapiens, the smart apes, were once not so smart, but even dumb apes called Homo erectus. But these dumb apes, beta version humans, who stood upright and walked on two legs, were smart enough to be able to grasp between their fingers an action they were capable of performing due to their opposable thumbs. They were able to grasp between their fingers some button-shaped bulbous plants growing straight from the ground and pop these odd little morsels into their mouths. Of course, Homo erectus felt somewhat sated. Their hunger quenched, at least momentarily, and they immediately realized that gathering this little snack was a lot less laborious than climbing trees and plucking fruit from branches or stalking and slaying mammoths or deer to hush their hungry bellies. Of course, the Homo erectus were grateful for the bite to eat, but it wasn't so much the flavor of the mushrooms that kept Homo erectus scavenging for more. Let's be honest, mushrooms taste a little earthy. Obviously, it was the pleasant surprise of the giddy, euphoric feelings, the visual entertainment and flying through the air travel adventures the mushrooms offered that had Homo erectus back down on all fours again, scouring the ground. For another score. Soon, psilocybin mushrooms were an essential part of Homo erectus's dietary regime. And a eh, voila. Or maybe not so flash, bang, snap, instantaneously, but fairly quickly in the grand time scale of things. We evolved. Our brain power increased by twofold, and suddenly we were endowed with superpowers never before experienced by Homo erectus. Sure, Homo erectus could do lots of things apes can't, like build a fire to cook over, make tools for hunting and shredding meat, whittle together a sailing craft and paddles to row those little boats, and navigate the open seas with rudimentary beta versions of communication devices, a proto-language. But there were still so many superpowers yet to be cracked open, powers that would make humans stand out even more starkly from the four-legged animals. Most importantly, powers like imagination, abstract thinking, and more sophisticated language skills, all of which would endow humans with the ability to produce more complex tools and gain greater mastery over their environment. The alchemy contained inside these tiny little potassium-packed higher consciousness delivery systems was enough to spark a magical, miraculous species-altering revolution, a revolution of evolution charted in the psychonautic ethnobotanist Terence McKenna's groundbreaking, feather-ruffling work, Food of the Gods. The title, of course, refers to magic mushrooms, 
The magic mushrooms early humans found growing in the kelp lops, the meadows, and in the dark recesses of the forest. These psychedelic mushrooms transformed the limited functioning brain of Homo erectus, upgraded it to a more technologically advanced model, so different from the previous model that a whole new species emerged, the Homo sapien. Sapien meaning wise or clever. Once these unique powers of the mind were unlocked, Homo sapiens morphed into philosophers who contemplated heavy, heady questions. The kinds of questions you'd expect potheads and shroomheads to be prone to pontificating about. Questions about the nature of their own existence and the meaning of that existence the origins of the universe and everything in it, and the existence of the soul, the possibility of an afterlife. And maybe even they caught glimpses of the afterlife and then went on to offer clues to what exactly happens after we leave this body bag. The new wise humans also invented art to externalize, to record, to remember, and share all these wild visions of sugar plums that danced in their heads after a date with the mushroom. And they also invented religion to try to answer some of the metaphysical questions the mushroom raised. They developed new methods of problem solving and were emboldened to get more wildly intrepid in their experiments with the materials that surrounded them, going on to become nature's most prolific inventors and soon discovering how to make things grow. Of course, completing all these pipe-dreamy projects required cooperation, so they had to devise a more versatile, more comprehensive language for coordinating actions and conveying ideas to their team members. A level of communication evidenced in their art and the tools that these first Homo sapiens created. It's good to remind ourselves that while humans' relationship with magic mushrooms may feel like a modern innovation. We've actually been well acquainted with the mushroom since ancient times. While stoned ape theory is speculation, and there isn't much physical evidence to support it, aside from the sudden mind upgrade humans experienced, there is physical evidence that magic mushrooms have been around since almost beginning of time. We know this because some billion-year-old mushrooms, a species called Oras Feira Giralde, imprinted themselves as fossils and left behind traces of the compound chitlin that makes up the cell walls of fungi fossils that were discovered by the Belgian paleobiologist Corentin Lauren in 2019. And since magic mushrooms can thrive in just about any climate or in any place, even in high traffic areas, unlike many other plants, it shouldn't be surprising to find traces of their use in ancient cultures from every corner of the globe. The beginning of the well-documented, written-in-stone history of magic mushrooms blooms and blossoms in the hearts, minds, and societies of the indigenous peoples of Mesoamerica and Siberia. In these ancient societies, the magic mushroom was the centerpiece of their culture the main course at their communal meals. 
it wasn't wine in their communal cups, served during religious rituals designed to bring people closer to the divine and to each other. It was a psilocybin magic mushroom. In each period of the history of the magic mushroom's use, we see changes for better or for worse in our own species, perhaps influenced in small or large part by our interactions with the magic mushroom. The mushroom was so revered in the cultures of the ancient Mesoamericans that artwork, statues especially, were carved out to pay homage to this magnanimous gift from the heavens, a gift that served as a conduit for transcending the worries of life and communicating with the deities. In the statues of the Aztec god of flowers, Zagabili, an ecstatic transcendent expression rests on his face, and his body is decorated with entheogenic divine plants, his knees and earlobes ornamented with Ionanakatl, Liberty Cap, Mushrooms. According to the Spanish colonizers, whose eyewitness accounts of Mesoamerican magic mushroom rituals are the source of most of our information about Mesoamerican magic mushroom use, these mushroom stones depicting Liberty Cap mushrooms or psilocybe mexicana in the scientific lingo were used regularly in religious rituals and communal celebrations. Rituals in which liberty cat mushrooms or tionanacato meaning flesh of the gods in the Mayan and Aztec language of Nahuatl were brewed with mescal or pluk, a fermented drink made from agave and chocolate, a magic potion that once consumed induced feelings of euphoria, immersive mystical visions filled with visual, auditory, and sensory hallucinations, as well as other sublime spiritual experiences. Tio Nanakatl, the flesh of the gods, features prominently in the mythologies of the Toltec, Mayans, and Aztecs, whose myths ascribe the origins of this plant to a generous gift-giving gesture by the serpent god, Quetzalcoatl, the creator of all life. Spanish observers were shocked to witness the serving of intoxicating psilocybin mushrooms at the coronation of the Aztec Emperor Ahuizut in 1486 and the Aztec scholar Tesosomoc reported that his grandfather Montezuma's coronation also involved a Tiananacatl ritual. Since Tiananacatl was seen and experienced as a gift from the gods. The ancient Mayans, Toltecs, and Aztecs made copious notes and records of the powers manifested by psilocybe mushroom use and passed knowledge of these properties through religious art and narratives. Tragically, most of these meticulous maintained trip logs were destroyed by the 16th century Spanish missionaries who viewed magic mushroom use as satanic, i.e. a threat to their colonizing campaigns. Fortunately, the recorded observations of and participation in the Tionanacatl rituals of one Spanish friar in the 1500s have survived inspiring 20th century investigation into the identity of the substance 
referred to as Teonanagato, a mystery which has since been solved due to decades of sleuthing. Just as the Aztecs and Mayans believed mushrooms had been gifted to them by the god Quetzalcoatl, ancient Egyptians believed that since mushrooms grow from the ground, and not from seeds, that they had been hidden under the soil by the god Osiris, and they referred to them as the food of the gods. A sacred substance, magic mushrooms often make appearances in ancient Egyptian religious art, and it's believed that the ancient Egyptians may have actively cultivated psychedelic mushrooms to ensure an ample, reliable supply for their religious rituals. Rituals in which only the descendants of the gods, the priests and upper classes, could partake of these mushrooms. Across the globe in Siberia, we find more evidence of magic mushroom use in ancient cultures Although these mushrooms were dispensed using unexpected, unsavory to some delivery methods. Among several indigenous groups in Eurasian Siberia, the long held custom of drinking reindeer urine administered by a shaman endures to this day among Russian descendants of Siberia first settlers. While you wouldn't expect reindeer urine to have psychoactive properties, and it doesn't inherently, it is imbued with these magic powers by the reindeer's penchant for consuming in large quantities the Amanita muscaria mushroom, a red and white mushroom that contains the hallucinogenic compounds muscamol and ibotenic acid, but not psilocybin. When the urine or meat of deer who have consumed Amanita muscaria mushrooms is imbibed or consumed, Siberian tribal members report similar, though not identical, types of trips to those who consume psilocybin mushrooms. Ceremonial trips that involve visual hallucinations unique to Amanita muscaria, trips that center around fly agaric spirits, or wapang, as they are called by the Koraic tribe of northeastern Siberia. Fly agaric spirits are playful and silly. They're shaped like mushrooms and pull harmless pranks on the tripper, as well as present many eye-opening experiences, feelings of invincibility and clairvoyant insights to the one who has imbibed the sacred substance. Siberian shroom rituals may have been the source material for many modern traditions related to Santa Claus, It's believed that Santa's attire may have been inspired by the garb worn by shamans as they collected fly agaric mushrooms. A red coat and red pants, both with white fur cuffs and black boots. In Siberian fly agaric rituals, once the shaman had filled his leather sack with enough magic mushrooms for the rest of the villagers, He would make an unconventional re-entry into his yurt tent, sliding into the yurt through the smoke hole in the roof. The yurt smoke hole would play a powerful role in the ceremony that followed. After the shaman and his guests had consumed the magic, sacred potion made from the Amanita muscaria, the shaman would disappear out of the yurt through the same hole he had entered through appearing as if he had flown into the sky, at least through the eyes of the hallucinating ritual participants. 
During the ceremony, spirits would also be channeled through the smoke hole, a portal to the spiritual world, gifting the participants in this ritual with enlightening visions, visions that for the Sami, the Laplanders often involved hallucinations of, of themselves ascending through the smoke hole and traveling through the sky in a sleigh pulled by horses or reindeer. Named for their insecticidal application, Amanita muscaria or fly agaric mushrooms are believed to have been used by ancient Hindus who made many references in the Rig Veda to a mysterious sacred substance called Soma in Sanskrit. Soma was revered as a god and consumed ceremonially by priests who received prophetic visions while under its influence. Soma, the elixir of life, was a drug so powerful it was reputed to have many many powers, including the power to cover what is naked, heal all that is sick, make the blind see, the lame walk, lead the seeker to what they are seeking, to uncover lost treasures of knowledge and wisdom, and set the lost on the right path, to set fractured relationships aright, to illuminate eternal truths, to open channels of communication with the gods, and even gift the soul with immortality. While only clergy consume soma or fly agaric mushroom potions among the ancient Vedic Indo-Aryans, these mushrooms were so prevalent and revered among the Druids that they constructed purpose-built sweat houses simply for enjoying their flying experiences. Undoubtedly, members of both cultures used fly agaric mushrooms as a means of communicating with the universe and striving towards spiritual enlightenment. However, Amanita muscaria mushrooms were used by the ancient Vikings to quite different ends to embolden them for battle. Drawing on the mushroom's stimulant properties to induce feelings of invincibility and remove fear inhibitions. The Greeks' preoccupation with philosophy may have also been inspired by psychedelic mushrooms consumed during the Eleusian mysteries by men and women from all classes of Greek society, from slaves to emperors, so long as they spoke Greek and their hands were clean of any homicidal blood. The magic potion at the center of these mystery ceremonies celebrating the harvest cycles was called Kikion, the drink of heroes, and was believed to be a direct line to Demeter, the snake-haired goddess of agriculture, the earth, and the underworld. The potent psychoactive ingredients in Gikion that left Eleusinian mystery participants feeling healed, ecstatic, and connected were most likely ergofungus and psilocybin mushrooms. Kikion was reputed to be a means of repairing and renewing relationships as it inspired partakers to stay up all night in conversations with loved ones, thus earning it the title of the antidote to isolation. Also called the drink of champions, the Kikion mentioned many times by Homer and the Iliad, the Odyssey, and the Hymn to Demeter, along with the Hellenistic mystery cults and all other ecstasy, inducing hallucinogens. They were outlawed in the 4th century under the Holy Roman Empire, 
which sought to eliminate all traditions viewed as counter to Christianity. It was at this time that magic mushrooms and other psychedelics entered a dark age of suppression and prohibition that would last for several centuries due to psychedelic subversive associations and its potentialities. The death of King Charles VI of Hungary in 1740 after consuming a meal of death cap mushrooms fueled hysteria about consuming these fungi that would linger on for many more centuries. King Charles VI is not history's only victim of mushroom poisoning. There have been many others. The Roman Emperor Claudius, the composer Johann Chopin, the writer Nicholas Evans, the king of the elephants in the Babar stories, and possibly even the Buddha himself. Let there be no delusions. Deadly, poisonous mushrooms do exist and do camouflage themselves among the magical, enlivening kind. So as we enter the shroom renaissance, this mycelium revival, as we enter a new age of fungi-fueled enlightenment, in which our minds have been freed from the prohibitions and oppressions of the past, we're grateful to also be living in the midst of an information revolution, a revolution that has granted us access to a wealth of accurate, rigorously investigated scientific information about the magic mushroom. As we Reapproach the magic mushroom with the curious minds of a wisdom thirsty seeker. We know that it's our responsibility to educate ourselves about the mushroom's benefits and risks, to approach the mushroom with reverence and respect for its powers, to learn to discern between the mushrooms of darkness and those of the light, the friendly and the hostile. As we step through the portals of perception as they open again, it's not difficult to wonder, though, whether the revival of magic mushrooms augurs our next evolutionary leap. The next frontier in the human experience, similar to that radical revolution that might have been experienced two billion years ago on the plains of Africa, as a result of the discovery of the magic mushroom. As more and more wise humans, aka Homo sapiens, partake in the ancient ritual of consciousness belonging, of deep diving into the dormant recesses of the universe and ourselves, we can be sure that new vistas will come into sight as new portals are thrown open. And as they are, we can expect that we will not leave this phase of human history unchanged.